uh, broadcasting from Lagos, and this is 11th Cano, chapter 5, verse 7. There will be Chinese translation. Chayarada Madhava, Kunjabi Hari, Gopi Jana Balava, Giri Bharadhari, Yashodhanandana, Rajadhanarandana, Imunatira Bhunachari, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. The text is 11th canto, uh, chapter 5, verse 7. Rajasa, Godasankalpaha, Kamuka Ahimanyava, Dambika Manina Papa, Biha Sant Yachuta Priya. Rajasa, Godasankalpaha. Kamuka Ahimanyava Dambika Manina Papa Diha Santi Chuta Priyan. We'll go over the word for word. You don't, do you have it in writing? You have it in English? Or? Yeah. Rajasa. Rajasa. By the prominence of the mode of passion. Gora Sankalpaha. Having horrible desires. Kamuka. Lusty. Ahimanyava. Their anger like a snake. Dambikaha. Deceitful. Maninaha. Overly proud. Papa. Sinful. Bihasanti. They make fun. A shoot to the Priyan. Of those who are dear to the infallible Lord. Due to the influence of the mode of passion, the materialistic followers of the Vedas become subject to violent desires and are excessively lusty. Their anger is like that of a snake. Deceitful, overly proud, and sinful in their behavior, they mock the devotees who are dear to Lord Ashuta. refers to ghastly desires like thinking he is my enemy, let him die. Due to the mode of passion, waves of lust overcome the conditioned soul, who then becomes furious like a snake. 
Such a person filled with pride and arrogance cannot appreciate the humble efforts of the Lord's devotees to distribute Krishna consciousness. He thinks these beggars worship Lord Vishnu to fill their bellies. They'll never be happy. Such a materialistic rascal cannot appreciate the transcendental status of the devotees of the Lord, who are personally protected and encouraged by the personality of God. Omagyana Timiranda Syagananjana Shalakaya Chasura Milita Nyena Tasmai Shri Gurdavena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manovitam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Slam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yudhapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupa Sajajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Dham Sajivam Sajaitam Sabdutam Rijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shah Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Prichadane Nirvisesha Shunivari Ashachari Shatarani Mount Vishnu Daya Krishna Sai Vale, Shimadi Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tiamani. Bhat Maru Jyojila Prema Jashi Rupa Nuga Bhakti Dashi Gora Karuna Shati Vigra Hayam Sate. Namo Varshavana Videi Dai Taya Kripadei Krishna Sambandha Vigana Taine Prabhavai Namaha. Namaste Gorani Shimurtai Dinatarane. Upper Okay, this is very suitable because today is a Ramnomi and this is like a description of Ravana. Ravana was uh, very powerful and very puffed up. Ravana 
So he couldn't even recognize what to speak of appreciating devotees. He couldn't recognize the Lord himself. So he thought that Ramachandra was just ordinary human, and for Rakshasas, humans are just nothing for fighting. And he thought all these Hanuman and everybody were just monkeys. So he had horrible desires because what well, was his habit to steal other men's wives? Still many women against their will. So in this case, he made a big mistake because he kidnapped Sita, the wife of the Lord, Brahm. But he wanted to do anything to keep her. His desire was so lusty and strong. Even though he had many beautiful wives who were very dedicated. Very beautiful and very loyal and submissive wife. And he had very wonderful sons, all very great warriors. But he got attracted to Sita. And that's like modern people are not only modern, but they want Lakshmi, but not Narayan. They want to enjoy the wealth of the world, but they don't want to serve the Supreme Lord, the Lord of Lakshmi. So they, they may get very powerful and rich, but they can't keep it. So when the Rama and the monkeys were coming to attack, everyone, his advisors, even though they were Rakshashas, they told him, you have to give up because you can't defeat Rama, he's Ishan. But he couldn't believe it. So his lusty desires were so strong that, you know, when, when the attack came, he sent his brothers and his sons one by one, thinking they can defeat the whole you know, army. And even when Hanuman first came, I think two of his sons, you know, he sent and they were killed by Hanuman very easily.
But he was so blinded by lust that he just kept, even though he was losing everything, he couldn't understand. He kept sending another son, another son, another brother, and they were all getting killed. But he wouldn't take any good advice, and he, he was, in order to get this lusty desire fulfilled, he was sacrificing everything he had, all his family, his whole kingdom. So that's why Krishna says that this lust is a great enemy. It's an all-devouring, sinful enemy of mankind. So he was lust. When the lust is not fulfilled, we get angry. So when his advisors, his wives, his brothers were trying to tell him good advice, he just became very angry. He would say, I'm the king. You can't tell me anything. So we see in modern day, we see politicians like that, we see anybody, even a boss of a company sometimes, or a husband, a father, I'm, you know, I'm in a position, Don't you, nobody can tell me anything, I have money. So this lust, it covers over the, you know, it takes over, and Krishna says we have to control it, but that means we have to develop love. Chaitanya Chaitanya describes just like iron and gold are both metal, but they're much different, you know, you use them in much different ways. So lust is the opposite of love is perverted when love in the spiritual world is only love. Everybody loves Krishna and therefore everybody loves everybody. But in the mature world it gets perverted into lust. Lust means I just want for myself and it doesn't matter the cost if I get what I want. So Robin was losing everything he had, all his family, his wives were getting against him. His brothers were dead, his sons were dead, but he kept thinking, I'll get Sita and I can enjoy. He 
couldn't think like Arjuna. Arjuna was thinking, if I win, but all the all these people that were my family and my teachers, if they're all dead, what's the use of winning? How can I enjoy? So better we don't fight. Arjuna was thinking, you know, if if all these men are killed, then their wives will be lamenting, their mothers will be lamenting. So better we just forget it, let them have it. It wasn't that he was a coward and was afraid to fight or anything, but he just didn't want such a mess, such a you know a disaster in the world. Ravana lost blind speaking you know, so he didn't care. He was, he was, so this is the difference between love and love. Love means we want to please the other person without expecting anything in return. Even if no one knows, you know, you did it. So that's how we can make spiritual advance. When, when we try to please Krishna, when we try to please the Guru, we try to please the devotees, then without expecting anything in return, just to see them happy. Just last Saturday was the appearance day of Ramanujacharya, one of the great Acharyas. And he taught that the best way to please the Guru is to serve the devotees. When you, the Guru is very pleased when we serve the devotees. Krishna is very pleased also. So we want to please Krishna, we have to please the Guru. We want to please the Guru, we please the devotees. And ultimately, for the very advanced devotee, everyone is a devotee. He's trying to please everyone by giving them Krishna. So here, you know, this is my enemy. Kill him, kill him, kill him. That's what Robin was thinking. Just kill everybody, kill Ram. trying to seduce her by first by telling her how rich he was and how she could be the number one queen and She wasn't interested. 
Okay, this was Ram, 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 Ram. Just like devotees, you know, Maya is trying to attract us in so many ways, so many advertisements, so many opportunities to try to enjoy the material of a devotee, just chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, please take this book, please chant Hare Krishna, I have to go to the temple, time for Arctic, no time for Maya. So the lust is one of the gates that leads to hell. If we if we give in to lust and cultivate that lust and we end up in hellish conditions. Krishna says, Dumbo, Dharp, Abhimani, you know, the, the demon is just full of arrogance, and anger, pride. So the materialistic people see devotees and think, well, they're fools, you know, they're beggars. The devotee is not begging for food and shelter. They know that Krishna provides everything. But they're trying to engage the people service. Why they're begging for the sake of Krishna, please engage in Krishna's service. When we ask for a donation, we're really asking them, please serve Krishna, because if they give some service to devotee, they're serving Krishna. We've all heard of Agatha Sukriti. That means unknowingly we do something good. So when devotees, you know, if, if devotees, even if someone just we ask someone, excuse me, but how do I find a shopping mall or something, and they help us. They don't know we're devotees, they don't know anything, but if they're pious people and they help, they get benefit from Krishna. They serve the devotee. So as there's more and more devotees, more people serve devotees, more people make advance. Even uh, they don't know, but but Krishna is so kind. 
community is trying to help everybody. So now in this Kali Yuga, of course, there's many little Ravanas. But they're very, Ravana was, you know, so powerful. He had conquered all the demigods, his sons had conquered the demigods. And when he kidnapped these women, he gave them a palace and golden palaces and servants. And the buildings in Lanka were made out of gold. He said when Hanuman, you know, when he started Lanka on fire, this gold was melting and flowing down the street in molten liquid gold. But he wasn't happy, he was still lusty, he wanted more. At risk of everything he wanted to see. To. And we know in the previous life he was here running a Hirani Kashipu became very powerful by Tapasya. And when he was killed by Vishnu, he couldn't recognize that this was the Supreme Lord. He just thought, he must have done more Tapasya than me. So in the next life is Ravana did so much to us. And he tried the same way to get the benediction that he could never be killed. So he was telling Lord Brahma, okay, I can't be killed in day or not, not by a demon, not by a demigod, on and on like that. But, uh, then Lord Brahma said, what about humans? He laughed, oh, humans are so weak, I don't have to worry, I don't need special benediction. So the Lord being smarter and covered his intelligence and then he came as a human, Lord Ramachandra. So 
So he was telling the sea, why, you know, I can give you golden palaces and thousands of maid servants. Why do you care about this human who is kicked out of his kingdom and he's just living in the forest? Come with me. And of course she just ram 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 he driving him crazy. And then he threatened her. If you don't surrender to me, I'm going to eat you for breakfast. He's a man eater. And the other Rakshashi women were telling Sita, you're stupid, you shouldn't marry him, you know, he's in love with you, he'll take good care of you. Just like us, you know, we're devotees and sometimes it seems like there's something in the material world might be nice, but if we're fortunate, Krishna keeps, keeps us alert. No, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, there's nothing more valuable than chanting the holy name, being with devotees. So these modern people, they're like Ravana with the loss and the anger and the greed and everything. It's the same mentality. It has to be given up. So by associating with Krishna, by chanting the holy name, Associating with Krishna by chanting, by reading Bhagavad Gita, we get purified. And all the natural good qualities of the body will manifest. I see Karnamrita Dasi is watching. Uh, nice to see you. I hope your health is good and you recovered from all your adventures and many others. So we want to be, you know, like Sita, loyal to Guru, loyal to Krishna. Ramachandra came to teach us a perfect king, perfect father, perfect husband. In India, they talk about Ram Raja, you know, they want the kingdom of Ram, because in that, when Ram was king, there was no disease or no unhappiness, no distress for anybody. No one had to die unless they wanted to. And Prabhupada says we can make it like that again if everybody's chanting the holy name, if everybody's worshiping Krishna. So, 
To watch the kingdom of God without God, then that won't work. Like Ravana had the kingdom of opulence, of material opulence, much more than the luxurious apartments in Vrindavan or anything like that. But he could never be happy, he just wanted more and more. So if the bodies are thinking of questions, you know, they can send them in. Uh, comments. You know, Ram, after he got back uh, to Ayodhya, he did a yagya for 36,000 years. Continuous yagya for the benefit of the world, not for his own benefit. He was the undisputed king of the entire world. And then during the Yagya, he gave everything to the priests, to the Brahmanas. He gave everything he had, all the land, and everything except the clothes he was wearing. And Sita did the same thing. She had only the nose ring. She had her, her sari and a nose ring, that's all. No more jewelry, anything. But the priests, the Brahmanas, they gave it all back. They thought, what do we need all this for? The Brahmanas. They don't want all that wealth. So, Ravana, I mean, Rama took it all back, but he just dedicated to giving in charity to anyone who needed it. He was teaching a perfect king and, you know, perfect any kind of authority, big or small. If he heard that someone in the kingdom was not happy with him, uh, he would try to think of how I can act in such a way to make this person happy. Even though he had absolute power, could kick anyone out or kill anyone, he, he would try to help them. Said he treated the citizens just like a father treats his children. And that means all the citizens, including the animals and the trees, everyone. That's why Ram 
become so much remembered, even though it was millions of years ago, people still relish hearing the Ramayana. And they make so many movies of Ramayana and, and also things that are inspired by Ramayana. And like in China, we have the Monkey King, you know, Hanuman. Very popular, right? Yes. I think last year, the year before, it was the most popular movie in China. It was Monkey King fighting all the demons. And he's like Hanuman. He can change his form. He can look like an old man. He can look like anything. He can fly, and he's always doing righteous good for everybody. But the modern stories tend to, you know, create more Ravana type. Heroes. So we're, you know, worshiping Ram, or worshiping as Ram. So I don't know if it was Ram Nomi or the other day, Ram Vijay, and they would dress up like monkeys and they would play a sport of attacking Lanka. And they take clubs and they... His, one of his most intimate associates was Marari Gupta. And he said he's actually Hanuman. And he showed Rari Gupta his form of Hanuman. I mean, Ram. He wrote it on the forehead, Rari Gupta, Ram. Mari Gupta chanted Ram his whole life, and then Lord, Lord Chaitanya told him, now you should worship Krishna. tried and he, he just couldn't give up Ram. And he was thinking, this is, I can't please Lord Chaitanya, what can I do? And then Lord Chaitanya said, this is very good. You're so dedicated to your Lord. You were Hanuman, and he jumped on his back and he ran around and danced for a long time. It's like Hanuman would carry 
Ram and Lakshman on his shoulders. And he wanted to go far and fast. So today we can try to remember Hanuman and Sita and Lakshman, so dedicated to his brother. He was a prince, he could have stayed in the kingdom also, but he, he went in the forest with Raman and he never slept for 14 years. Stayed up all night guarding. Brothers were so dedicated that Bharat, he, he, he was made a king, but he never wore the dress of the king, he never sat on the throne. But he managed the entire king for. kept a very strict diet. He ate only barley cooked in cow urine. And, but as soon as Ram came, he, he immediately handed over the kingdom to him. There was no envy, no This is inconceivable, but this is the proper way. If we make our society like that, if we can have so much love and respect, and you know, then everything can become so sublime. But by meditating on these people these good qualities. Okay, so any questions come? Gregory Kirchner, nice to see you. <laughs> I hope I don't disturb you very much. Because you're too intelligent, very hard person to deal with. And hi, I'm Ananda. And Karnamita Ganga. All right, did any questions come? Okay, so I'm sure you're having Ramanomi festivals everywhere there in your country. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. It's holiday now. Anyway, thank you everybody very much for listening. And please bless me that I can remember Krishna and Ram and do something to influence others to um, pick up spiritual life. We had a nice TV show this morning for a few minutes, and we told about Ram Raj, the moderator, was thought that kingdom of God sounded like a very good subject.
And all the people at the television station were very happy to get the Bhagavad Gita. One Muslim girl, we didn't have enough. She was crying, please get me. I want when I want. And we had to go back. Yeah. In Nigeria. Nigeria. Africa. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm going to try to be back on Friday uh, morning. 7 o'clock China time. Okay. Okay, that's a little difficult for me, but I'll try. All right.